Russia is the number one nuclear power in the world. Some sources say they have close to 6,000 nuclear warheads, 1,600 of them believed to be deployed. The United States has about 5,500, about 1,600 of which are deployed. Russia's stockpile is growing. The United States' stockpile is shrinking. Doesn't matter what the exact numbers are. What we know is they are a nuclear superpower. And they have hundreds and hundreds of these nuclear warheads deployed with the ability to launch them from the sea, the air, and the ground. There is no room for error here. If you look at this from a worldview, when you look at this from the psychological standpoint of Vladimir Putin, and he is allowed to invade a democratic republic and get away with it, then what happens next? Now, the question is, how self-destructive is he? Well, who knows? I don't think anybody knows that. And trust me, the United States government has a department that does nothing but study Vladimir Putin every time he's on camera. They look to see what's his gait. Does he look bloated that day? Are his eyes red? Is his syntax changed? Is he slurring any words? Is the cadence of what he's saying different? Are his eye movements different? Look at his pupils. Is there anything that suggests a shift in his mentality, in his mental health, in his stress levels, in his health levels, in the color of the sclera in his eyes? Anything that would suggest that he is ill, that he is mentally ill, anything. When you have someone that is an autocrat that has their finger on the button, you watch this person very closely to see if you're seeing the prodromal, the lead up to any kind of illness. He has watched very closely. I've given you my view of a small sampling of things. We have a department of this government, I promise you, that's not publicized, that studies this guy every second he's on tape to look for baselines and then variance from baselines. Is Putin really psychotic, evil, power-hungry, and a madman? Or is this just media hype to advance some political agenda to justify something that's going on? I'm going to tell you, obviously, I don't know Vladimir Putin. I've not evaluated him. And unlike some professionals that have no problem rendering a diagnosis on someone they've never evaluated, tested, interacted with, or whatever, I can't do that. Wish I could, but I can't. I don't have x-ray vision. But what I can do, which I think is extremely valuable, is this. I study body language. I've spent a lot of time doing that in working with juries. I've spent time vertically developing that skill. It is a science. There's a lot behind it. And it came in particularly useful in this situation because I don't even almost speak Russian. Not even almost. I have had the benefit of having some really good translations of some of the tapes that I've looked at early on leading up to this conflict with the buildup and also fairly recently. Now, some of the translations are things that aren't maybe as precise as others. But some of them have come from really good sources, really good Russian translators, so I have great confidence in those. And I've been assisted in this and been given access to some of these by my good friends and colleagues at Behavior Panel. And if this is one of the sites that you don't follow, I highly recommend that you subscribe and do now. They have a two-hour and I think 36-minute 
program up right now on YouTube analyzing Vladimir Putin and with great examples explaining why they think what they think. They're colleagues of mine. They're good friends of mine. We've talked about this. We've collaborated on it and spent time on it. And they do that with really critical interviews. So I highly recommend it. I have the greatest respect in the world for these professionals. I'm going to talk about them a little bit more in a minute because they've been a great resource for me on this, and we've exchanged ideas about it. So I can't diagnose him, and you know I'm not into labels anyway, but let me tell you what I see. What I see in his behavior, his syntax, his conduct, is this is an individual that at times, and I'm going to talk about which ones, but at times is seething anger. He's showing signs of what I refer to as savior behavior. This is important because he believes that he is a savior of the Russian people, not just the people in Russia, and he is a true believer. This is not something that he's just saying in the media to have something to say to justify what he's doing. 30-plus percent of ethnic Russians are in the Ukraine, and I believe that he has convinced himself to the core of his soul that he is going in there to remove the folks that are persecuting them. So think about this. He does not believe that he is just invading another country and going on a land grab, a resource grab, just trying to rebuild something. He believes he is a savior. And trust me, people with a savior complex are self-righteous, and that makes them dangerous. And there are 30-plus percent ethnic Russians in Ukraine, and he has convinced himself, I am going to save my people. And he shows many true believer attributes by branding the bad guys. Here's a problem. The bad guys, they're Ukrainian and the United States. Because we represent the same thing in terms of a democratic republic. Something that's dangerous here is there are ethnic Russians in all former USSR nations. So is he going to go save them next? Where does it stop? Now, what do I base this on? The way he communicates. Now, as I said, I've got good translations for what he's saying, so I'm having to read this in subtitles and listen to the translations, which are someone else speaking his words. So I can't give any weight to that or what it means. I just have to take the words themselves, not the emphasis of the syntax of the words, but the actual words he speaks. But there are certain emphatic illustrators, the way that he uses his hands, and there are certain things that you'll sometimes see people do where they categorize things, like the old Ben Franklin T where you do pros and cons, pros and cons. This is good. This is bad. This is good. This is bad. And they'll speak where certain things are emphasized. There's only one asymmetric emotion out of all emotions expressed on the face. And There are a lot of ways to describe it, but it is disgust, it is disdain, it's dismissive, it's this superior sort of dismissal and superior disgust towards something. He uses that when he's talking about kind of the senior partner in the situation, and that's the United States. And you only see this when he's talking about the Ukraine and the United States out of everything else he's talking about. There are other times that he's talking where he kind of slumps down in his chair, 
puts his hands on the table, his voice drops. But when he's talking about the Ukraine, when he's talking about the United States, he gets very animated with his body language and in his voice. He is a true believer. And this adds up to the fact that this guy actually believes that he is the victim here. He is wronged. His country is wronged. Now, look, I just need to repeat this every once in a while. I'm not political. I don't know enough about politics to be political. I am certainly not competent to make geopolitical comments, and you need to take everything I say as being in my lane of psychological, not political, not geopolitical, but psychological in reading the motivations of the person in this role. I see resignation to do what is to be done. Now, do I know where this is going to stop? I don't know where it's going to stop. But let me tell you something else. I don't believe he does either. I know this. He is resigned to do what he decided to do when this started. So all of this stuff about deterrence... I can't comment on the diplomacy of all of this, and I'm not one that thinks we need to rush into war. Don't know enough about it to advise about that, but I can tell you that when you're dealing with an autocratic situation, you're dealing with an individual without checks and balances, and that's a dangerous situation because I don't care whether you're talking about a czar, a um, king, a queen, if you're talking about one person, that person is subject to psychological swings. They can wake up one day on the wrong side of the bed. They can have mood swings. They can become delusional. They can have meltdowns. They can have all kinds of issues and problems. And if it goes down to one person and there's no checks and balances, then you don't know what you're going to get. And penetrating the delusional system of someone that is delusional, and whether he is or not, is impossible for me to say, having never met him, but I can tell you that his body language suggests to me that he believes what he's saying. He believes that he is a savior of this 30-plus percent ethnic Russians in Ukraine. He believes he's going in there to save these people from those that would do them harm. And when that's true, that makes this a dangerous individual. I don't see a person that you can negotiate with to get to a resolution because he has outright stated and built his case that the other party— The U.S., NATO, Ukraine cannot be trusted and break their word. I don't see this ending well, even if we leave this to Ukraine. Now, I mentioned earlier that I've spoken to my colleagues with the Behavior Panel. One of them, Greg Hartley, absolutely brilliant guy, formerly with the Army, interrogation specialist, also taught resistance to interrogation, worked with the Defense Intelligence Agency, Navy SEALs, federal law enforcement, always says the organism does what made the organism successful. And he observes that Putin has quietly rolled up the Crimea and Georgia with very little impact successfully. Now, that was in his history when he decided to roll up on Ukraine. Now, it hasn't gone the way that he thought. It didn't go the way that it did with the other two, but that's in the background. Now, also, one of my other colleagues there with Behavior Panel is Scott Rouse. Again, 
deep involvement with law enforcement, military, Fortune 500 companies. And these two, by the way, uh, work with Chase Hughes, probably the premier behavioral profiling expert in the world, 20 years with the military, just retired in 2019. Mark Bowden, body language, behavioral expert, works with the G7, developed the truth plane methodology. I mean, this is all these guys do. That's why I suggest that you subscribe and look at their detailed analysis of Putin. But Scott Rouse says, and this is a quote from him, what I'm seeing scares me from a professional point of view. He's going to do what he decided he was going to do when he pulled this plan down off the shelf. And they all agree that when he speaks of the Ukraine and the U.S., they see a very similar disgust. So I think what I'm saying here is, is this an evil deranged, delusional madman. I can't really speak to that, but I can tell you that looking at his body language, everything I just said, I say with great confidence. And what bothers me the most is that he believes he's the victim here. He believes that his country is the victim here. And if you look at his background as an individual, it fits right in. When you believe you're the victim and then you have a savior complex, uh, that does not bode well for sitting down and working out something because you, being the West, the U.S., the Democratic Republics, are seen as the ones that are evil. So that's my thumbnail about what I read behaviorally from him. I could give you 50 reasons, everything from his body language, use of hands, posture, facial expressions, eye movements, all the things to support that. But I don't think you're really interested in that at this point. If you are, they go into that in great detail with Behavior Panel, and I've talked with them about that in great detail. So if you're interested in that, I'll let you gather that detail from them. You know, Ukraine is a pretty big country. You know, it's big enough that there are parts of the Ukraine that haven't felt the sting of what's happened yet. Just like here with with COVID. There were parts of this country that were really stung by COVID and parts that hadn't yet. And so there were people living normal lives and other parts that were just in paralysis. But Ukraine is a country about the size of Texas with 40 million people. So there are parts of it that don't have destroyed buildings. So there's still some order going on there. And you can imagine how hard it is for people here in Idaho and Nebraska and California to say, well, why is this affecting us so much? And why should we care so much? Because a democratic country is being invaded by an autocratic bully that is a nuclear superpower, and it can rip up the entire world order and take us to a situation much like Hitler. And psychologically, that is a big deal. That is a big deal. A really, really big deal. 